In this video, I'll show you how I upgraded the existing service that was here before to this new 200 amp 40 circuit panel with a new exterior and main disconnect, meter, and complete service riser to 200 amp. All copper wiring, all new branch circuits, surge protection. Let's get to it. Let me show you how I did it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm in Clark, New Jersey. This looks pretty good right here. Not too much. This one's kind of cute. Look at this thing. So. <laughs> I don't know what the point of that was. Okay, so uh, this guy who hired me is also a subscriber in Clark, New Jersey. So hello, Steve, and thank you for hiring me to do this work on your house. It was a pleasure doing work for you, and I wish you years of happiness with this electrical service. So after I kill all the circuit breakers and remove the meter so that there's no electrical load on these lines right here, uh, I'm using my Klein ratchet cutters here to cut the existing uh, service entrance conductors because, as you can see, the service conductors from the, tr from the service drop are a little bit short. So I'm going to reuse some of the existing wiring that was there in place, and then it's up to PSE and G to come back if they decide it's worthy to reconnect or run new service entrance conductors on the service drop. Now, obviously, I'm working live here, and there's been a lot of discussions on my videos re of late. Why do you got to work live? It's, it's you know, all you got to do is call the, the utility company. They'll turn it off for you. Well, it's a lot easier said than done having them coordinate them to have them come out and disconnect it. And then reconnect it at the end of the day requires a service inspection, which is not always possible. And so uh, I've been doing these overhead services live like this for over 20 years. And yes... It is dangerous, don't get me wrong, but once you kill all of the load inside the house, including all the circuit breakers and the meter, which is an electrical load, there's no arcing that can be expected from cutting the cable. So in other words, where I'm taping up the conductors right here, the electrons are not going to just leap out and go nowhere. They need to go someplace where they're being called to action. So as long as you don't give them a path, mainly yourself, because the body is a resistor and it will conduct electricity <clears throat> then you should be fine up there on the top of the ladder again if you're not a professional like myself who's been through school I'm licensed and now I'm even an instructor so I feel pretty safe doing this work live like this and of course PSE and G and JCPNL allows you permits you to disconnect the power as long as you have a license and a permit to do the work for overhead services if you have any questions about this, leave them down in the comments. I get plenty all the time. Okay, so now that I've disconnected the service drop at the weatherhead, I'm going to start to disable the old meter here. It's 100 amps. I want to say that this uh, service was redone probably either 20 or 25 years ago, just based on what I've seen here at the house and obviously the service was done before the vinyl siding was put up which is what explains the J channel which is that trim you see around the meter uh, I don't particularly I'm not a big fan of the J channel and here I have to rip it out because the new meter which is 200 amps uh, just barely covers up the opening and then you can see the J channel that extends up on the riser at the top of the meter there uh, that also leaves an opening into behind the vinyl siding, which could lead it to water getting inside the guy's house. So when I take this apart and I take the riser down and come back later on, you'll see with a piece of um, PVC board, not AZAC, but it's the knockoff AZAC, quarter inch, just to cover up that area right there. And then what I do is I put some silicone along the back of it and I seal it to the house. And I think that's good to keep the water out from getting in behind this meter and inside to the original sheathing causing rot. It should also be known that even though this video is coming out like the third week of April, uh, this work was done I believe at the end of March. Uh, it was a couple days before my wife and I went on vacation and we went to Las Vegas and had a great time. Anyway, here I am on top of the ladder and I have the ladder strategically placed in between both of these straps. So that while I'm up there on the ladder, I can get this strap done on, the, on my right hand side and then the other strap done on my left hand side or right above me here. Uh, this is what you call efficiency. Putting that ladder in a spot where you can get two things done at the same time. 
if you're working for an electrical contractor, that person would appreciate you doing that uh, to try to get this done uh, quick, as quickly and efficiently and as safely as possible. So, so in case you didn't know, Milwaukee are the ones, Milwaukee is the company that actually invented the Sawzall back in 1951, they introduced it. So when you see the term Sawzall, that's exclusive to Milwaukee. Every other company cannot call it the Sawzall because that's a Milwaukee patent, but they'll call it a reciprocating saw. And as you can tell, I'm a big fan of Milwaukee tools. So got to take all these straps down as easily as possible. Now you see they didn't use PVC straps. They used metal straps here, which is a violation. And there's a reason why we use PVC straps. The PVC straps are required on PVC, especially where you're using an expansion coupling, because if you use a rigid strap or a metal strap, that PVC will not move, and then therefore your expansion coupling will be doing nothing. I used to be a big fan of using the metal straps on PVC, but I won't be doing that anymore, uh, just because of the reasons I just told you. And so as I'm slowly um, unassembling this old PVC riser, I've learned to put the garbage can uh, almost near the bottom of the ladder. So while you're up there, you can just throw the junk right into the garbage can from up above. This will save time and it's an efficient way to get things done. Whenever there's a nipple between the meter and the back of the uh, panel on the inside, the older it is, the harder it is to get that out of there. A lot of times, well, I was able to get the lock nuts off there, but as you can see, there's also lock nuts here on the panel side. And uh, it was actually bushing, I'm sorry, there were actually bonding bushings on both sides. It's only required on the one side. You only need to bond it one time. Uh, one bond makes that metal nipple grounded as required by the code so there's no sense in doing it twice but it was done twice here probably because that's the way they found it when they first um when they first did the the first did the service the original service now this house i believe was built in the late 1950s or early 1960s and i said uh like i said this was probably upgraded sometimes in the late 90s and early 2000s just from the looks of the uh panel so once i get all my circuit breakers out of there they go right in the trash and um, now we're going to start undoing the grounds and the neutrals until we can start taking some of these cables out of the panel. And then we can finally get to that uh, bonding lock nut that you see up at the top of the panel. Getting access to that was uh, difficult. And I think what I do is I come back here with a sawzall, a long blade, and I actually cut it just to be able to uh, get this panel out of there. Getting the panel out is usually... Uh, a bigger job than getting a new one in and getting land in all the circuit breakers because sometimes you don't know how they wedged it in here and you could tell it might be amateur hour after using uh, coarse sheetrock screws to mount the panel here as you can see that's how I got rid of the, uh, the nipple once I cut that, and then I'm able to pull the panel out of here. And then once the panel's out, then we can start lining up the meter on the outside and the new electrical panel and set up the new nipple between the two. Now I'm making this hole extra large because I know I'll be coming back here sometime this spring or summer 
uh, to hook up an electric vehicle charger, which is coming. So I take this whole big piece out of here so I got plenty of room to work with and I'm not leaving a big mess behind knowing that I'm going to have to be coming back here at some point to access the bottom of the new electrical panel to run a new circuit for the electric vehicle charger. At the time, the uh, customer did not know what kind of electric vehicle he was getting, so he hasn't bought a charger as of yet, but we are prepped and ready to go for that when that call comes. So this is the uh, outside disconnect, which is going to be a two inch nipple between the meter, I'm sorry, between the panel and the disconnect. And then to the left of that will be the meter. So we're going to have to make another knockout here to the left on the uh, service disconnect before we go outside and start mounting that equipment. We try to plan everything out, make all these knockouts, put in connectors and lock nuts where we need to ahead of time. This makes it easier to set it in place once you're ready to do that step. And this is a 200 amp service rated Cutler Hammer BR uh, 200 amp service disconnect which could also be used as a emergency disconnect but I prefer to do all my bonding which means bringing the grounding electroconductors into the main disconnect here on the outside. You can still do it on the inside I just prefer to bring everything to the outside. So here, uh, uh, you call me singing there, here I'm just making this hole a little bit bigger because I better be putting in a two inch nipple between the disconnect and the panel, whereas before it was inch and a quarter between the meter and the old panel. Uh, well, I just put this up. That's the look of disappointment when you forgot to turn the camera back on. The cord, you just turned it off to change the battery. So, recording these videos, this happens uh, way too often, unfortunately. But, I do think it's improving every time I make videos. Let me know in the comments what you think. So, all you missed with the footage on the outside was me mounting, or rather, just cutting this small piece of 2-inch PVC to fit the, uh, the nipple between the disconnect on the outside and the, and the load center here on the inside. All I just did was mark... The piece of PVC with a marker flush with the plywood sheathing that you see that I just cut out so that I can cut the PVC and it can go into the connector at the top of this panel right above the main breaker. I'll, I'll knock out a, uh, a two inch opening for the, uh, for the PVC to go between the disconnect and the load center. All right, you didn't miss much, but what I had to do, because of the J channel that I took out, the meter was not gonna cover it up and water could get behind there. So while I broke for lunch, I went to Home Depot, I got a, a sheet of quarter inch uh, PVC, the cheap kind, not the AZAC, um, just so we can mount our equipment on there and try to keep the water from penetrating underneath this siding. I'm gonna do my best. So uh, I, I cut this sheet and mounted it to the, board, to the house right here put the screws in a spot where hopefully they'll be covered well I'm pretty sure they'll be covered up by the meter and the disconnect so you won't see them and then finally before I put my last screws up on top there what I'll do is I'll put a dab of uh, cork behind it or silicone behind it to prevent the water from getting in that's all you missed after drilling a quarter inch pilot hole from inside the panel out onto this piece of uh, PVC board it was a little pilot hole, so I knew where to make the uh, larger two and a half inch hole. So I can join the, uh, the back side of the disconnect to the panel on the inside. That's what I'm doing here.
It was a real windy day here, obviously, as you can hear. Um, so once I have that male adapter on the back of the service disconnect here, I'm able to just slide it over the conduit with some glue, of course, and then drive some two inch, I'm sorry, some four inch weather resistant or corrosion resistant uh, screws. So we have the vinyl siding and then you have some insulation behind that and then the original siding. So you really, I needed to use four inch long corrosion resistant screws here uh, to get some beef to actually connect it to some kind of structure here um, of this equipment. It's always better if you can get an actual stud and I was able to locate the stud on both of these pieces here uh, for the service disconnect and for the meter and at least get one or two four inch screws attached to actually a, a framing stud on the inside. It's sturdy and it's not going anywhere I can promise you that. All right, so here I probably should have put on this hub before I mounted the meter, but I forgot to do that. Doing it from this position can be a little rough because the back screws are irreversible screws. So getting them started and finished up there in that position so close to the finished siding wall there makes it difficult. Uh, so this is 2-inch PVC with a prefab 90. So I have the PVC heater that could bend the 2-inch pipe, or the conduit. The trouble is doing a 2-inch... Uh, sweep like that is difficult because of the space that it takes up. So I got a prefab 90 and I taped it on. And then what I do is I hold it up to the piece where I think it's going to go to. And then I get a mark. And then I come back here and I cut it. And then I put it back into the male adapter. Now I've got the perfect height, which you can't see up at the top because of this camera angle. Uh, but there you can see it up at the top. I come back up with a, uh, a four foot box level to make sure my conduit is straight going up. And then I count the rungs on the vinyl siding so that my straps are evenly placed. So it looks neat and workmanlike as required by National Electric Code 110, TAC 12, workmanlike manner. That's very important to me to do something like that. Uh, so this part up here in the corner is kind of difficult. I see, as you can see, I got two windows so the previous setup was just like this. You got to be above that window at a minimum. Uh, and the idea is that the service drop and the service entrance conductors coming out of the weather head are not readily accessible. So the idea is if he opens up the window here at the bottom there, he's not able to reach out the window and grab onto those conductors. And you might say, well, gee, who would want to do that? And the point is exactly. You don't want anybody to do that. So we got to put them in a place above the windows in a spot where they're not readily accessible. Where they're not readily accessible. Now there are a couple exceptions uh, because every once in a while you run into a situation where that can't be done. And so um, one of the exceptions is as long as it's above the window or three feet away from the window, then you're good to go. I basically put this back where it was 25 years ago when they updated the uh, service originally. So I'm just going to attach the riser here and then come back later with another strap within 12 inches of the service head once I have um, once I have the conductors run well actually I put the service head on halfway here and then uh, I have to come back after I run the service entrance conductors to attach the um, the top side of the weather head this is number this is two watt uh, copper conductors here and so you can't see it in the camera but I'm pushing it up to the edge at the top of the ladder which you can't see unfortunately and they come out of the LB maybe like five or six feet before I, sl before I sleeve up the rest of the uh, conductor through the LB. And you got to do this three different times because I just think I just bought a 95 piece of uh, 2 watt copper. Which is somewhere about $2 a foot nowadays, I think. Anyway, copper is so much easier to work with. It costs a little more money, but it is a better conductor than aluminum. Not that there's anything wrong with aluminum. Because if you look outside your house, unless you live right on the beach... The uh, National Electric Grid is aluminum, okay? So, yes, they have problems with aluminum connections come undone, oxidation, et cetera, et cetera. But the majority of the, majority of the National Grid is aluminum. So I got no problem using aluminum as my service entrance conductors, although the copper is a little bit smaller and easier to work with uh, when you're putting these disconnects in and this uh, meter right beside it. 
make sure you use the uh, the brand name is the Panatrox is the uh, oxide the Panatrox uh, the Nolox whatever it's called <laughs> the oxidation medicine here for the uh, aluminum conductors don't need them for the copper and you don't need them for the aluminum either to be honest with you as long as it's stalled correctly and uh, today's modern aluminum conductors does not require any uh, oxidation formulas all right so finally after getting the outside done and it's all buttoned up except for the um, at the service head where we're going to tie in at the end of the day and I think the LB cover may, may still need to be put on and the meter installed so once that's all done I feel comfortable now I'm able to terminate my service entrance conductors here at the the panel the breaker the panel breaker so this 200 amp breaker that's there is not technically the main disconnect but it's actually just a panel disconnect now I believe my customer Pocket here told me he was going to be using uh, some kind of solar system he's gonna put on the um, mm -hmm. roof mm -hmm. as his backup power with the anchor battery I think he said anyway I've seen people do that uh, I'm not a real big fan of that as of yet but it's not my house so I'm installing uh, what he wants to have done for his new uh, solar system and this electrical system here but the reason why I put in the main breaker panel here is if you ever decide to get a combustible engine portable generator uh, you have the means to install the interlock between the main breaker and the generator breaker if you don't have the main disconnect here you would have to add one later on to have that set up so for an additional twenty or thirty dollars uh, on my end for the system that I'm installing here I buy the panel with the main disconnect although it's certainly not required because the main disconnect or the service disconnect is on the outside so yes this system here is a four wire so I have two hots to go to the main breaker I have my neutral that's taped up that's going to go to the lug you see on the right and then the green wire is now the equipment grounding conductor which gets derived from the service disconnect into this panel so all my neutrals and all my grounds in this panel are isolated uh, to prevent <clears throat> a parallel path back to the source to clear a fault. That's the purpose of the equipment grounding conductor. And we want that to be fast, so we don't want parallel paths, which means more than one current, one more than one path for current to flow. We want to have just one path, low impedance, back to the source to facilitate the circuit breaker in the event of a ground fault or a short circuit. And of course, an overload would be something else that would just heat up the conductor, the, the uh, ungrounded conductor would heat up inside the circuit breaker and the circuit breaker would trip on an overload. But for a ground fault and for a short circuit, we want that low impedance path and we want one path back to the source. That's what grounding and bonding is all about. And it also prevents objectionable current flow, which is current flowing on normally grounded parts, which we don't want. This is why we only install the main bonding jumper in the service disconnect and in all other locations downstream from that main disconnect the grounds and neutrals are isolated from one another that's what the code calls for and that's what makes a safe grounded electrical system any questions about any of that stuff guys leave them in the in the comments i get asked about that a lot i think i'm i got a good idea of grounding and bonding and what's required and why it's required and what it does and how to set it up so uh please any questions about that that i can answer i will in the comments now would be a good time if you haven't already to hit that like button really appreciate you guys waiting i know it's been a few weeks since i've gotten a video out but life has been very very busy uh, as you know i i'm instructing a group of 17 apprentices two nights a week uh in somerset at the iec education and training center that takes up a lot of time not only in the classroom and traveling there and back but prep time on my nights off so usually on sunday night and tuesday night at around eight o'clock i got to stop whatever the heck i'm doing and prepare for the next night's lesson so that takes up a lot of time uh, all in all i'm also trying to run my business here so my hours are very filled and um I love what I do, don't get me wrong, but it takes up a lot of time and I'm anxiously awaiting uh, May 1st, which is my class's final examination for the first year, and uh, that'll be the last night of school. So I'm looking forward to that so I can get back into regular classic electric business 
and of course uh, try to ramp up my YouTube page here as well, which is really growing. Uh, I hit 20,000 subscribers on the last video. Uh, thank you guys so much. It's fantastic. I can't believe the growth on this channel, but I guess if I'm giving a lot of if I'm giving away a lot of good information that people can use, that's a great thing. I think that's what YouTube was all about: sharing information and teaching others how to do something. Now, the work that I'm doing here, there's other ways to do it. Okay, and there's other channels you can watch. That's why I appreciate you watching my channel and taking my information. Uh, and believe me, I get some older seasoned electricians just ripping me. Not too bad, but there's enough of them that just kind of trying to rip at me for whatever reason uh, they can find. Yes, there's a million ways to do this job. And if, that's not, if that's not the way you do it, doesn't make it wrong, okay? Uh, maybe you're not as experienced as I am. I think I'm very experienced, and yes, I make mistakes, and yes, I'm human. But if you're going to leave rude comments down in the comment section that are uncalled for, they're just... Uh, I can't tolerate that. So just keep it to yourself. You got nothing nice to say. Otherwise, uh, I appreciate all the comments. Um, the nice ones really make me feel good. And uh, thank you for that. So here you see I got the whole house surge protector in there. It's the Eaton. This is just a, like almost like a builder's grade style surge protection. It's required now by 230 tax 67 in the National Electric Code. So we got to put that in there. Okay, so this is me tying in back at the end of the day. This is about... I don't know, I want to say about 6.30 at night, and uh, I had promised this customer the power would be back on at 6, but it ran a little bit later than I thought. So after I bug it in here, and as I'm pulling away, it's actually dark. Uh, but this is like the last step. We cut the, we, we tie back into the service drop here to liven uh, the meter, and then once the meter is live, we put the meter back in and liven the service, turn on the breakers one at a time, and then I usually go back the following day to mark the breakers or the following week whenever the, the um, inspection is scheduled we'll mark the uh, mark the breakers i'll be there to meet the inspector and if there's any problem then we can uh, resolve that issue and uh, get the final approval if you like this video do me a favor hit the like button subscribe and hit that notification bell hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it was worth the wait for you uh, it's over and this work got inspected a couple weeks later and passed with flying colors Yes, we did a grounding electrode system, but I didn't include any in this video. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.